In this tutorial, we'll learn what a plan is and how to create a plan using the tools and functionality in ArcGIS Urban. We'll focus on greenfield planning using the city of Hardyville. Greenfield planning is developing urban designs for previously undeveloped land in a city or rural area. Since the turn of the century, Hardyville has experienced rapid growth and has received significant development interest. As a result, the city has annexed several large tracts. One of the primary challenges Hardyville faces is working with developers, neighbouring jurisdictions and staff to ensure that these large tracts of land are developed sustainably. In urban, plans are city initiatives such as small area plans. When we create a plan looking at this area, a copy of zoning, parcels, overlays and other information within the extent is created and we can edit each of these layers. You can view all the plans within the Hardyville instance by selecting the plan icon. As with projects, when you select a plan, you zoom to that plan area. On the scenario selector, select scenario 6 and zoom into the Millstone Landing master plan. This is where we'll draw the plan area. On the top right of the toolbar, click the Add button and select Plan. A new toolbar appears that will allow you to draw the study area for the new plan. In the bottom right, use the Tilt the View button to switch to a top-down view. Then use Rotate, Zoom and Pan to adjust the view to look something like this. Draw an area representing the shape of the plan area. Double click to finish the drawing. In the top right, click Add Plan. In the Plan Settings dialog box, you can add a name. I'll call this Millstone Tract Plan. You can also add an address and a description. There's the option to add a thumbnail image and a web page URL as well. If you have a start and end date for the project, this is where you can add it. If you check the Featured option, your plan will be kept at the top of the search results. You can also add a web scene that has context layers for your plan area. Context layers are web scenes hosted on your ArcGIS Online account. They can also be any publicly available web scene. We'll look at this in more detail in a moment. Click OK. Your plan is added to the search panel and to the map view. From the plan's detail card, click the Options button and select Configure. In the Plan Settings dialog box on the General tab, we see the same information we saw earlier when we added the plan. Here, we'll focus on adding the Design Context Layer. For this plan, we'll bring in a web scene called Millstone Context Layers. This provides a site plan we can reference when drawing parcels. To do this, click the pencil icon. Click My Content and from the drop-down menu, select ArcGIS Online. In the search box, type in Millstone Context Layers. Select the plan and click OK. On the Scenarios tab, expand Scenario 1. This is the default scenario that can be edited in the plan designer. Here you have the option to name the scenario and add a description. Once your plan has been published, under Design Visualization, you'll see the name of the published web scene. Click Scenario 1 to collapse it and click OK. Plan scenarios are a great tool for comparing different massing, zoning, space use and overlay options for the same area. Once a plan has been created, it can be edited in the plan designer. You can edit the plan by manually drawing features such as zoning boundaries and parcels. On the plan detail card, select options and click edit. Here you can see Urban has pulled in existing zoning around the plan area. In the top right hand corner, select zoning. Select the current zoning area in the view. Click modify to open the zoning types panel. Here there's a breakdown for every zone in the city, including existing as well as proposed zones. Scroll down to the highlighted zone and click the ellipses to open the configure window. 
Within each zone, we can see parameters such as building heights, floor area ratio, multi-level setbacks, and allowed space uses. These parameters come directly from your city's zoning code. Click Cancel to return to the main view. In its existing condition, Millstone Landing is undeveloped, but there's a master plan for the area. And in this scenario, we have a proposed development that would envision the area with single family housing. I want to create a new zone that represents phase one of the Millstone Track Plan and allows a range of single family residential housing. To do this, I'll create a new zoning area. To the left of the zoning panel is a zoning workflow toolbar. Feel free to collapse a side panel at any time using the arrows. On the workflow toolbar, click the split tool. Start and end your polyline outside the target parcel and double click to end the split line. In the upper right corner, select split to apply the split operation. Now we can apply the new zoning type by selecting the zoning boundary in the map and then selecting the assigned type from the zoning type side panel. Select the proposed zone in the view. Select modify to open the zoning types panel and scroll down to the Millstone Track single family cottage zone. Select the zoning type to apply it to the selected zone. You can also click on the zoning label to bring up the active zones modify dialog. Now let's draw parcels. Click the 2D button at the bottom right of your screen to view the area from above and make it easier to trace the parcels. In the upper right hand corner, click Development and make sure Develop is highlighted. Collapse the side panel using the arrows. On the workflow toolbar, click Add Parcels. The drawing interface appears. To begin, trace the larger parcel boundary and double click to finish the area. When you're finished drawing, the polygon will turn orange and you can click OK. Now let's use the split tool to split the larger area into individual parcels. Make sure the single large parcel is selected. Draw a cutting polyline splitting the parcel. In the upper right hand corner, click split. Repeat this process for all the parcels you'd like to create. In addition to splitting parcels, you can also merge parcels. To see how this works, select two adjacent parcels by holding down the shift key on your keyboard and clicking on the parcels. Click the merge button. Click the blue merge button on the alert dialog box to confirm this action. Just note there's no undo button for this action. Once two parcels have been merged, you must split them manually using the split tool to divide them again. With the parcels drawn, we can now see the zoning envelopes. Zoning envelopes display the maximum extent of the potential building based on setbacks and heights in your applied zone. To enable a zoning envelope, select multiple parcels by clicking on parcels while using the shift key. You can also use the selection tools found on the toolbar. To do this, click on the selection tools and then depending on the direction that you move the mouse, you'll select different parcels. If you're going from right to left, this selection fully contains the features within the selection box. If you're going from left to right, you'll be selecting features that intersect the selection box. You can also use a line, and if you choose this option, just draw the line through the parcels that you'd like to select. Once you've selected the parcels, click Done. Expand the side panel by clicking the arrows. Scroll down and check display zoning envelopes. Click the 3D button at the bottom right of your screen to tilt the view and see the zoning envelopes. After zoning types are applied and parcels are created, you can apply building types to each parcel. A building type will allow you to visualise what a typical structure for that specific building type might look like. Certain building types are only allowed in their appropriate zoning areas. 
Use the arrows to expand the side panel. Make sure that development is selected and that develop is active. Click modify to access the building type side panel. Scroll down to single family residential. Select the building type to apply it to the selected parcels. These buildings represent plausible building forms. The form itself is guided by the zoning parameters as well as the parameters belonging to the building type. You can apply different building types by opening the building types panel and selecting a building type of your choice. There are 49 default building types available when setting up Urban with the US default template and custom building types can be created as well. As you apply different building types, you may encounter a warning label. Buildings with a warning label will have an exclamation mark icon above the building. This tells you that the selected building is not allowed in the zone. To view the reason for the warning, select one of the building parcels in the view. In the side panel, scroll down to building information to read about the cause of the warning. Once you've finished viewing the warning, switch back to a building type that's allowed in the zone. Next, we'll turn off the zoning envelopes. Use the selection tool to select all of the parcels. Click done when you're finished. In the side panel, uncheck display zoning envelopes. You can also turn off the zoning envelopes by going to the hamburger button and turning off the layer in the table of contents. Now let's look at the parcel edges to make sure we have the correct edge types assigned. This will influence what setbacks are applied to the buildings. On the parcel editing toolbar, select the edge orientation tool. An editing parcel edges tool panel opens. The edge assignments are displayed and all show a default value with a side setback type. We'll make the edges facing the street set to front and street and the rear edges will set to rear and street. Hold down the shift key and select the edges facing the street. Set these edges to front and street. Now select the back edges. Set these edges to rear and street. Click done to complete this step. Note how the building forms change with the correct setbacks. This allows us to understand the connection between rules governing land use and the physical outcomes. In this tutorial, we learnt how to create a plan and associate contextual layers that we could use to sketch out parcel and zoning boundaries. We also learnt how to apply the default zoning and building types in ArcGIS Urban. In the next tutorial, we'll look at creating your own building and zoning types.